Okay, great. Super. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to today's uh, webinar. I appreciate the time that you've taken out uh, of your busy schedule to come uh, visit with us here today. Today's title is Standing on the Shoulder of a Global Trade Titan. What exactly does that mean? Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit. And what I want to discuss here is uh, for today's session is today's uh, what we do at Polaris, uh, what are trading some of our trading strategies and techniques, and the automation that we use uh, with our auto trade assistant. Okay, so before we get to the details, uh, industry uh, requires that uh, we do mention the NFA compliance uh, rule dash. 2-29C, which uh, simply states that hypothetical performance has inherent limitations and trading in futures and derivatives on futures is speculative in nature. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, Polaris Trading Group does offer services and products for educational purposes only on a subscription basis. Uh, we are not uh, licensed brokers or advisors currently. And uh, so we you will see some performance results uh, at the back side of our presentation today and um, so this assumes that we all agree to the current industry disclaimer so let's just get right to it so for those of you that don't know who I am uh, I have been around for quite some time uh, Polaris Trading Group is beginning its fourth year now uh, as an educator uh, I have 33 years experience uh, trading for uh, investment banks and hedge funds and currently as an independent proprietary day trader like yourself. Uh, I've, over the years I've worked for Shearson, Lehman Brothers, uh, they're no longer uh, in existence though. Uh, United Bank of Switzerland is, uh, and I've also traded for a few high frequency uh, hedge funds uh, up until about the financial crisis. Uh, during that time I was a market maker enlisted in NASDAQ stocks. I've also traded a variety of uh, index uh, futures products and derivatives and again uh, heavily involved in uh, portfolio risk management and uh, we all are basically our own risk managers if we're trading our own accounts so it's really important that we understand all that portion of it there's my little mug shot in the bottom so you see kind of what I look like <laughs> all right now what is a uh, global trade titan and standing on the shoulders of a global trade titan so a year or so ago I received what's called the Global Trade Titan Award by uh, Dr. Dean Hanley he's uh, a well-known authority many of you probably know him um, Polaris was uh, evaluated by Dr. Dean Hanley for a number of months and for specific criteria so if you're looking for an educator, if you're looking for somebody that um, you know, has a background and an experience, uh, you know, if you're looking for somebody that needs, uh, that, that you're looking for that has uh, a level of experience and truthfulness and transparency and profitability, uh, this is what this Global Trade Titan Award is all about. So the cri criteria that Dr. Dean Hanley uses simply is, uh, that we trade truthfully, we post a detailed track record, and you'll see that on our website. I trade transparently. What does that mean? I show all my trades, targets, stops, in real time, all right, through our live trading room. All right, um, I trade live, I trade real money, and um, it is uh, full transparent. And the last and, you know, one of perhaps the key criteria uh, is a profitability that we net more than $50,000 a year uh, on a three contract uh, per trade basis. Uh, you can uh, visit uh, Dr. Dean Hanley's website at uh, globaltradetitans.com for more information about his services individually. Uh, but this was a Global Titan Award that I had received. Um, one of our members had uh, suggested to Dr. Hanley to come take a visit because there are a lot of people out there that are just not as uh, open as perhaps uh, you know others are so uh, I'm very proud of this award um, currently there are only 10 out of 1226 trade rooms that Dr. Hanley has uh, reviewed so this is a little plug for you know um, 
what you would get for you know coming to Polaris Trading. Okay, again, I have 30 or three years experience, and if you want to sit by back in the years when you know I was a young trader uh, back in the early 80s. Uh, I actually had to earn my way onto a trading desk, all right? And, you know, today it's so much easier. You can just open up a futures account and, and sit down and trade right alongside, you know, all the most experienced traders in the world. I had to earn a spot, all right, uh, you know, side by side with a trader. And, you know, learning from somebody side by side that has a tremendous amount of experience is, uh, uh, you know, a little bit intimidating but at the same time it's very gratifying and so what we try to do here here at Polaris is make it a nice environment um, I, I try to take a lot of the hard concepts that um, uh, you know that people might be a little bit more difficult uh, you know learning and, and try to uh, make them a lot easier for you guys all right uh, here are my four main uh, topics uh, in mission all right, I'm, I'm working to try to improve your decision-making skills. Um, you know, trading is not that difficult, all right? But a lot of people find it um, not as easy as they assumed. And a lot of it has to do with uh, decision-making capabilities, all right? And so I have a number of different techniques that we use to help improve our decision uh, techniques. Now, this particular uh, webinar this afternoon, guys, is a little bit uh, lengthy, uh, short for, for all the topics here. Uh, but we have individual workshops that we do with our members uh, specifically on each one of these. But this is what you'll get if you're seeking a, an education service uh, with somebody that, that has a, a level of experience. Uh, I want to I teach people to learn new empowering trading habits. Too many of our uh, people that I've come across over the years have really bad trading habits and so we want to help improve those and, and we do actively uh, help our members do that. Uh, de demystify price action. There's a lot of people that um, you know don't quite understand what's going on in the background of the market and, and why prices are up down and trading as, they're, as they are. It's really not that mysterious but uh, a lot of times people kind of get confused with uh, with all the um, action that's going out there. We, we take uh, kind of important uh, complex topics and we really break them down into their core components so it makes it I think so much easier for our uh, traders to understand what's going on and lastly and, and uh, is equally important across the spectrum is uh, we want to help you become a more informed trader now people talk about being a uh, retail trader or a professional trader I categorize traders regardless of the amount of money that they trade or manage is either being in the informed group or the uninformed group and uh, we want to make, make sure our traders are informed uh, from from many different respects all right now today what we want to go over is some of our primary trade strategies that we use now each one of these particular trade strategies everybody I'm just gonna to touch upon uh, lightly simply because each one of these has um, their own workshops that are at least an hour long to discuss um, but these are the uh, we basically we have three core ones and we open the day every day with what we call a daily trade strategy now it's my belief that everybody should, whether it's on their own or, or using some other uh, service, that you should prepare yourself on a day-to-day -day basis for what's in the potentially to come. We don't predict that what's going to happen in the marketplace. We do, though, prepare uh, very specifically um, on what may occur, and we lay out scenarios uh, of that. So it's important that... Um, that you do that now I don't know how many of you individually actually prepare some people actually come into the into their office and they sit down and they they fire up the machines and they start going um, that is not preparing for the day okay that is you know uh, wing dinging as I call it so we want to really make sure we prepare uh, the, the preparation uh, I outlines identifies the key levels in various trade scenarios we offer two scenarios a bullish and a bearish 
and um, we, we talk specifically about where we think the market uh, may end up on, on a particular day. So that's where we start um, and we outline. Uh, years back when I was at uh, the investment banks, we used to do this each morning for our morning global meeting. So uh, we basically gave a synopsis. I traded the biotechnology healthcare group at the investment banks years ago. And we would have to put out a uh, synopsis of what uh, key items and levels are, are actionable for that day. So our daily trade strategy briefing is just that, laying out a framework for the day of what actionable levels uh, that we'd be seeking to um, you know, take uh, trades from and do business from. All right. Now, uh, the opening range strategy breakout is our first strategy as it as it states on the opening all right there's a key reference level uh, at the beginning of the trade session all right that's the first one we'll touch upon here in a little bit a uh, little bit more detail and uh, the next one is a three-day cycle now some of you may um, also know know it as the Taylor trading technique others may not know it at all uh, it is a uh, pretty uh, repetitive cycle that we use it's one of our uh, core uh, strategies and techniques as we outline uh, the day on a day over day over basis and uh, some people also are very familiar perhaps with the uh, Murray math uh, trading system now we, again these are all individual uh, strategies in and of themselves but what we do is, is we combine uh, the various aspects of it more in a holistic fashion so we don't just uh, rely upon one particular uh, method or strategy, but rather uh, an amalgam of, uh, of many of them. And when they come together all right, at certain points uh, in the session, uh, it adds for the, uh, the strength of particular signals. All right. Now, in terms of our uh, daily trade strategy briefing, this is just a, an outline of, of what our members will get uh, and our guests and subscribers. Uh, what this simply is, as I mentioned, it's an outline for the day. And so uh, it is in your inbox no later than about 9 o'clock uh, a.m. Eastern Time. And it, it highlights uh, a little briefing of perhaps what happened the day before. We talk about our cycle, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more in a moment. The cycle day two on this particular example, I think this was Friday's uh, daily trade briefing. And then we highlight uh, the specific range projections and key levels for the day. Now, many of these actually get achieved uh, throughout the course of the day. And then we offer two scenarios, a bullish and a bearish scenario, and, and our uh, specific trade strategy that we want to look to employ on that particular session. All right, so it's laid out very concisely. Uh, there's not a lot of hyperbole. It's really uh, factual in terms of levels and what we're looking for but there is no uh, predicting you know trying to predict what's going to happen but rather uh, this is where we start a day uh, in our preparation so I believe everybody should do this all right and we do that I do this for our members and our subscribers and um, and again this is of a, of the uh, level where I used to do it when I was at the investment bank so very important all right all right, so the, the opening range uh, strategy breakout. Um, basically, the opening range principle uh, was, it has been around for many, many years. I mean, many of you have probably read about the, you know, the various opening range strategies. Now, how we do the opening range strategy might be a little bit different than, than others, but, you know, there are all kind of similarities to them. All right, no matter what which one you use but the important part of this that I found is as a market maker years ago we used to uh, have to uh, execute the what we call the opening range rotation which is the first five minutes of the day all the pent-up orders in, from the overnight period and that wanted to be executed on the opening now uh, it's impossible to o execute every order on the opening price itself uh, and that's dissimilar to the market on close where everybody gets the last price but rather in during the opening range the first five minutes uh, all these orders that are that are in our systems uh, get executed within that first five minutes and as long as you get an execution within the first five minutes uh, it's uh, as far as the uh, regulators are concerned then it's a valid execution 
all those executions for the first five minutes, um, what we use as a reference point is the uh, midpoint or the 50% point of the first five minute candle. And that's what we call the opening range rotation midpoint. Now, the interesting part of the opening principle is that, um, as it states here, the opening uh, price principle is that the opening price will be, think about this, near the high or low of the day, 70% of the time. So it's the opening price, or we use the opening average, it will basically be, be within 20% of the high or the low for the day, 70% of the time is another way of stating it. So when you think about it, the opening range strategy is one of the, the most uh, traded and most important strategies that a lot of people employ out there. Uh, money managers, day traders, hedge funds, everybody. Everybody's vying for positioning themselves as early as they can in the day for what they think the, the day will unfold as. All right, And we're no different. All right, uh, The only difference that we perhaps use is we wait for that first five minute average. Now some people use the first 30 minutes of the day. Uh, we use the first five and we bench ourselves uh, what the market may do or more likely to do uh, on that first five minutes. So as far as we're concerned, the, uh, the most important price of the day is the opening average price. And that is the single most um, uh, referenced price, I think, throughout the course of the session. And as the day unfolds, uh, you can see here on our charts that uh, when you get a breakaway gap or some sort of a gap and it doesn't fill, every, a lot of people think, seem to think gaps get filled very readily. Uh, in fact, that they don't. All right. Um, and again, I don't get into statistics on any of that stuff. But I'm really looking for if we get a breakdown gap like we see here, and if price can't rally back above that opening range midpoint, then that to me is a sign of, in this case, a sign of weakness. And I want to be looking to short that bounce all right, with a stop above the, the opening high. All right? And as you can see here on the right hand side, this example was we had an opening uh, we had an opening here. It took out it held the opening average, which is the thick blue line, took out the opening high, and that's a signal too. That's a trigger to enter. Stop goes then below the low of the range. And then we hit our targets up here. Now this is just an example, um, but this this happens readily, you know, uh, day to day. And then many times the price will come back and retest a higher low of the opening range, and and prices will uh, get supported or rejected from those levels, um, uh, such as this particular example. So uh, the opening range strategy very important for us, uh, and I think very important for the market. It's something that you should. Um, definitely look into. Again, we have our own little spin on it, and it's something that is uh, a big part of, of what we do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. All right. Now, the three-day trading cycle. This is another uh, one of our core strategies that we use, and this is, gets a little bit more involved. And, and this particular uh, strategy has a two-part workshop that we've uh, done with our members. So it's not something that, you know, you, you're gonna get the whole uh, gist of here, but what I wanna try to uh, demonstrate here for you guys is uh, the power of some of these, you know, uh, cycles that occur in the market. Now, um, this is a cycle that has, uh, is widely known by institutional uh, money managers, hedge funds, um, you know, high profile uh, traders out there. Uh, and there's actually a, uh, a few market wizards uh, that actually employ this particular strategy. Uh, you can look them up if you want. But this particular um, strategy dates, you know, back into the early 1940s, where a gentleman in early 1950s, where a gentleman by the name of George Douglas Taylor uh, was trading grains uh, out, out in Chicago. And he basically, you know, uh, observed what was happening on a day over day over basis. And he found that basically, you know, even though he was a short term intraday type trader uh, and, and the inherent nature of, of intraday trading, as we all know, is fairly choppy. 
But what he really realized was if he followed, you know, he identified, you know, who are the big players uh, at the time, all right? And, and today, um, you know, though we don't have the pits like we had in, in once, once before, um, and it's a little bit more difficult, but you can still follow the money. You can still follow the money trail uh, in a sense. And what he did was, was he identified some key players and what they did uh, and how price reacted. And really what he's what was looking to do is he was not a big trader, like many of us, small trading his own account. But he, he uh, realized that, if, hey, if I followed what the large institutional type investor, the so-called money guy, money, you know, big money players uh, did then and, and noticed what they did and observed day over day and then uh, kept track of what they did. All right. And what happened to price then he actually thought he could uncover some sort of a pattern and in fact he has all right and and it's what he refers to as a three-day cycle but basically the collective action of all these smart money type players simply is is the idea of of driving price from one extreme to another uh in more of a cyclic step-by-step -step, uh pattern so the structure of the cycle uh i just refer to them as cycle day one two and three and uh, I think those are a little bit um, better definable that way rather than what his original uh, notations were. He simply called it a buy day, a sell day, and a sell short day. But essentially what that means, guys, is on cycle day one, which is uh, the, the beginning of, the new, of a new cycle, uh, as you can see here, the, the goal of cycle day one or the beginning of a cycle, that it, actually the beginning of a cycle doesn't always occur on cycle day one, but typically uh, in a normal cycle, that's what we're looking for. So on cycle day one, uh, what the big money guys are looking to do, even though it says it's a buy day, uh, many times on cycle day one, you'll see the market sell off and pretty heavily. Now... Yeah, that could be confusing and you say, well, if it's called a buy day. Well, what, what they're really looking to do is they're looking to buy it all right, at the lowest possible price. Now, there are um, ranges that occur all right, repeatedly on cycle day one. There are ranges that re, uh, repeat on cycle day two and cycle day three. So once price has reached what's called an average range, then... then um, then the big money players will either begin to cover existing shorts and look to buy it as um, cheaply as they can. Many times they try to force selling of the small people that, that can't hold positions. And as such, uh, they're able to force prices as low as they can. And again, the big money players, think about it, they control all this money. It's not the day traders, you and I, right? We're, we're small, you know, fry. Even the, the swing trader, many times, you know, they're, they're the small people. Um, what these big, you know, elephants do is they come in, they drive prices to extremes. They buy up all the shares or all the contracts, right? They, they take all the weak people out, and then now they're positioned, and then they don't let the markets go down anymore. Then the cycle begins then on, on cycle day two. What is, what is their goal? Right? Their goal then is to drive price back up after this, the last seller has sold, drive it as high as they can. Now, late coming shorts, they get squeezed. All the prior long sellers, they're out of the market. So you can imagine that it's very easy for them collectively uh, to move prices back up. So as you can see on the graphic here, cycle day two tends to be a rally day. All right. And then once we get to those projections or uh, the levels uh, that they're looking to, they start on unloading them. Now new buyers come into the market. Everybody sees that the market is is uh, is rallying again, so they want to participate. But now they've already bought everything on the lows, so now they start scaling out. All right, and they and again this cycle repeats and so forth. And as the strength of the cycle continues. They'll push it to even further extremes into cycle day three, which is, by the way, called the sell short day. And what that simply means is they're exiting all the final longs. And if the markets have achieved or exceeded their cycle averages or their range averages, all right, then the big money says, okay, we're done selling 
you know, all our positions now. Now we want to establish uh, some new short positions. And then again, the cycle kind of repeats itself and it starts, you know, cycling back uh, down to the downside. Everybody, you know, uh, all of a sudden, all the, the, the people, are, again, the uninformed group, uh, they've bought in at the higher prices, expecting further uh, upside, and all of a sudden they're stuck holding it, and then the cycle kind of repeats itself. So it, it is, some people call it a vicious cycle, um, but it's just a nature of what the markets do, whether we have a continuation move to the upside or to the downside. The market typically, all right, um, backs and fills, and you get these ro rotational uh uh, action now, as we all know, the markets have been just you know up ticking, up ticking, up ticking day over day without barely any, uh, not even a one percent pullback. Uh, the cycles here have been somewhat disrupted in that the normal declines that would normally be uh, anticipated on on say cycle day one uh, are shallower than uh, normal. And I simply, I've seen these, these type cycles happen in the past, and I simply uh, uh, qualify them as what are called power cycles. And uh, the market has a preponderance and tendencies to uh, be a bullish cycle because the mutual funds are effectively long-only mutual funds, right? So the big, you know, 401ks and and IRAs and so forth, when you, when you put them into these mutual funds, they're basically long only. So there's a, uh, a lean naturally uh, to the upside. All right. Now, um, again, this is just touching the surface of the three-day cycle. There is a lot that goes on uh, with the three-day cycle. Uh, we discuss quite a bit uh, over a period of time. We actually have a spreadsheet that identifies specific uh, levels, uh, target levels, uh, and so forth. And again, I'll, I'll show you a couple snapshots of, of those uh, from today, all right, uh, and shortly. And uh, you'll see that uh, you know all this is once you have an understanding of the cycle. We discuss the cycles on a day-to-day -day basis. It's part of our daily briefing. It's part of our preparation work. And again. What I'm trying to convey to everybody here is these are techniques that are used by large institutional money managers and hedge funds. Okay, so uh, I think the edge here for our members of Polaris Trading Group is, is not just your typical education that we, you know, that many people provide out there, but the type of education that I'm providing and insights that I uh, provide for our members is from a 33 year history. Uh, in career, having worked for the investment banks, and then passing that knowledge, all right, over to our members. And again, it's I'm passing knowledge, but it's information first to to the recipient. And the recipient, our traders, then have to take that information and create their knowledge about it by practicing. All right by uh, you know always you know following it and 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 uh, uh, studying and reviewing. So there's a lot to it, but it really is not that difficult. One of the main premises that that I've tried to accomplish here with our members is taking you know topics that are um you know somewhat complex and um, put them in their simplest form. So again, there's a lot to absorb. But it's really not that difficult. Okay, so we, we try to make it as, as easily as we can. Now, the third uh, core strategy that we use, and, and again, it, this is very popular. It's actually very popular with a lot of the uh, FX guys. Uh, people that trade crude oil uh, use uh, Murray Math uh, quite a bit. And uh, so some of you may be, you know, familiar with it. It's very, it, it, it's very uh, attuned. No pun intended, but it's very attuned to the to the octave scale in music, and and how the market kind of swings from um, extremes, right, uh, back and forth. And again, not dissimilar to the three-day cycle, but uh, it, it it moves in very rhythmic patterns. And uh, again, I'm not going to go through each one of these. Um, 
items here on the left hand side but I just wanted to show you that th this is our indicator that we have on our software and what we're looking to do is uh, establish positions again um, if we have everything in the proper context uh, we got the cycle day you know um, uh, you know mapped out properly in the morning uh, what we're looking for is we're looking for prices then to uh, hit certain uh, notes if you will okay or or levels on the on the uh, on the scale on the octave scale where it, it prices have reached extremes or they're beginning to reverse and the momentum then is is picking up and then we're able to then establish a position that allows us to capture again uh, stay in sync with the cycle for that particular day so let's just assume uh, I'm not sure about that but let's just assume if this was say cycle day one now on cycle day one of the three-day cycle we would be anticipating a decline in price so if the market opens early way up here at the at the top part of this uh, range for the day now this this range for the day is set in place at the beginning of the day so all these lines uh, uh, don't move uh, as long as the price is within the context of, of this uh, range um, but if early in the morning we're anticipating a decline and we see an, an early spike up off the opening that fails to uh, hold bid uh, we may then in, and notice that it's at what we call an extreme overbought 75 percent and there's certain uh, percentages here all right that allow us to um, you know kind of handicap the uh, likelihood that this is probably not going to go any further and what we'll do simply is um, you know this is what's called the overbought there's too high of an enthusiasm uh, up at this particular uh, level and as such we'll establish a short position all right again this is a strategy it's not you know an actual individual trade all right but this is how we outline um, what we're trying to do is so we're we're actually blending like I said earlier a number of different um, strategies together rather than just using you know one in isolation now this could have been the opening the opening range strategy could have suggested to us to sell the opening uh, we had cycle day one on tap we're anticipating a normal cycle decline for that day and we opened up at an extreme Murray level All right, so those three kind of confluence uh, are all independent of one another and this would allow us to establish a position and again I want to stress with what we're trying to present here to you is that these are not just retail you know uh, unproven techniques these are techniques that big money managers and, and big trader money traders use so what we're trying to do is, is convey the message to our members and the techniques that uh, are, you know are useful all right and so by combining them uh, again it provides us an edge as well all right so these are the three core uh, trading uh, strategies that we use here now what I want to do is get a little bit more um, uh, granular in and look at some of the actual uh, trades and so forth that we've done and then we can hopefully open it up to we have enough time to open up for some questions all right now with all this these are strategies and it all looks great after the fact uh, but again using these uh, you know in sync with one another and lining them up on, on a particular day uh, type uh, is again very very useful all right today for instance um, was cycle day three and we still had a lot of momentum uh, early uh, the opening range uh, in the expectation was uh, for some higher uh, trade for today uh, in today's session and uh, we, we ended up getting that as well now strategies are strategies what we want to try to do is drill down into um, how, how can we get some executions on these and what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the automation that's available to uh, all our traders not just at Polaris but uh, virtually everybody so um, a lot of the big institutions as you certainly know use high frequency type algorithms and so forth uh, to execute their trades all right now there are still plenty of traders that that do things manually but for the most part everybody is you know into the uh, into the algorithmic type trading now 
my view of the algorithmic trading from the years of experience that I've had working for the investment banks and uh, been involved in, in ver various algorithmic uh, trading programs uh, while at the investment banks, um, the use of them for, for a retail type trader would be more as an assistant rather than uh, a black box. Okay, so black box trading is you really, number one, need to have a lot of capital and you got to really know, you know, what that algorithm is, is, is doing and, and know the back testing and so forth. Uh, what we've done here at uh, Polaris is be able, to, uh, we, we created an, uh, an auto trade, what we call assistant. All right, and, and it's just that. It is an algorithm that will execute our trades automatically. Um, it, it has a position sizing uh, feature to it, so which simply keeps risk across uniform across multiple uh, trades. We want to keep our risk uniform. Uh, we don't want to risk 200 on one, 800 on the next, et cetera, et cetera, and that's, that's a recipe for disaster. Um, and, you know, our risk is defined either by a specific dollar amount per trade or um, for larger account sizes. Many people like to keep their risk per trade at approximately, say, 1% as an example. And that, again, keeps, uh, uh, keeps things uniform. Now, the auto trade assistant that we have will uh, identify specific trade setups that we have. What do we call? We use a CCI crossover system. And we, we refer to that as our premium and discount. So I'm going to show you some examples, live examples of what we've done uh, recently with that. And we have a, an automatic we'll place an entry uh, based upon specific criteria that we've uh, outlined in the algorithm. Uh, places your stop loss and auto targets. <clears throat> um, and we basically use uh, what are called uh, R value targets. One R value is risk free. So if you're risking, say, 10 ticks, all right, the first target would be uh, plus 10 ticks. And then we do R multiples of that. So target uh, one, which is a 2R, would be 20 ticks, 30 ticks, 40 ticks, etc. Okay. And so this is our particular uh, auto trade <clears throat> assistant. It is available uh, for Sierra Chart and NinjaTrader all right, um, as a member. And uh, you can either, you know, the, what we've been, what we've done is we've built in flexibility, whether you're a single contract trader uh, or a multi-contract trader. Now, again, one caveat to, you know, using any algorithm or auto trade, it is not, and, you know, the operative word here for us is assistant, uh, which simply means y you as the trader still have the discretionary decision to decide which trades to take, but the auto trader will identify the uh, specific trade setups that are um, that qualify and that doesn't mean they're going to all work out clearly but they do qualify and um, if you need the assistance of the auto trader some of you are having difficulty pulling triggers uh, some of you actually pull triggers too fast and too often so that may help even slow you down but it is a methodical approach. It is not a robotic approach, even though that, uh, you know, Robbie the robot over here uh, is, is saying. But it's what he's saying. I will help you trade. He will not trade for you. Okay, so he will assist you in your uh, trading, um, following a very disciplined, uh, structured approach. Now, many traders out there, uh, don't have a disciplined approach. And again, uh, having an algorithm or an auto trade assistant all right, uh, will help. Now, the genesis of this, just as a by way of a little background, um, as an educator, as a moderator, I am trading and talking pretty much at the same time. Very difficult to do. You should try it one day. All right, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's like being the conductor of an orchestra and trying to play an instrument at the same time. Uh, very challenging um, many, many times. Uh, bottom line is uh, I needed to um, use the technology to help me execute my own trades. And as I uh, worked on developing that with my programmer, uh, we simply uh, created a uh, auto trader for, uh, for that purpose. Okay, so here are some examples of what the auto trade looks like, uh, what it'll do. Again, it'll execute automatically on uh, the Ninja and Sierra Chart platform. We are working currently on the TradeStation platform right now to get that up and running. 
Uh, but what you'll see here is on the, on the left-hand side chart, uh, and again, this one actually is with TradeStation, um, and this is, uh, we're in the process of beta testing this right now, but it looks pretty good, is uh, it'll show you a signal on, uh, over here, what's called the discount. This is what we call a discount. Now, guys, a discount is a, is a pullback within the context of an uptrend. So everybody knows buy a, buy a pullback, right? Nothing uh, earth shattering there. Uh, the problem is with uh, many people, they don't know where to buy it, how to buy it, all right, when to pull a trigger. So the criteria that we use in the algorithm, we've already identified what we call a fractal pivot, and uh, it will uh, automatically suggest an entry price based upon your position sizing criteria. All right, so you'll see long entry. I think this is, it says like five units there or so forth at whatever, 60, 85 or whatever it is, 65. It'll place your stop loss and it'll automatically scale out, all right, as the market is going in your favor. We also have a feature here where, where once you're at a risk-free level, it will automatically move your stop to break even to, to help manage the trade as well. Uh, an upcoming feature is going to be an auto uh, trailing feature using the ATR stop. All right, so there's a, an example of a, of a long uh, discount with the auto trade assistant. And by the way, uh, these are these were uh, trade setups that we did execute live in our trading room uh, in front of our members. All right, and again in the real money account, and they are all um, uh, tagged uh, in our performance report as well as uh, snapshots uh, to our uh, Twitter page. All right, so you can see on the right-hand side, this is uh, crude oil. For those of you that trade crude oil, uh, we had a, a premium uh, opportunity here uh, just under the opening range average here. So this is kind of part and parcel what we were doing here uh, on the particular day. We were, we were selling uh, short against the opening range and having a premium condition. So. Again, stop loss management is, is critical. Uh, you don't want your stops way too tight. You, you, you want them within a certain um, you know, acceptable parameter for the type of instrument that you're trading. Obviously, crude oil uh, you know, has a, a higher range and higher volatility, so you, know, you need to uh, position size and put your stops in the proper uh, location. All right. Again, the, it will do that uh, automatically for you. Uh, this particular trade played out, you know, very nicely. We did, uh, and again, management of the trade. All right, uh, is is at the discretion of the trader. All right. Uh, again, an auto trade assistant is just that: is to help entry, position size, and risk manage. Now, once you're in the trade, okay, uh, it becomes just like any other trade. All right, for you. Now you have to manage it. You can you can let the computer you know uh, do the scaling out for you, all right. Or you can make you know any fine tuning adjustments that that you need throughout the course of the uh, uh, the open trade itself, all right. So here's that example. A couple more examples here uh, on the left hand side again uh, crude oil, and again you can see the uh, acceleration to the downside. Now this there's a little little of a, a kind of a bounce here in price. Right, and, and, and I, you know, for those of you that trade crude oil, you'll, you'll know that it's very difficult to get in, all right, and you'll, you'll question yourself whether you should get in, shouldn't get in, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this will uh, automatically just put you in, all right, and again, once the criteria is there that we've predefined, all right, and you've, you've enabled the auto trade assistant to, to help you, effectively turning it on. Uh, it will it will help you there uh, smack dab and, and it'll put it put it right in and then again you don't have to worry about where to place your your exits it'll auto do that for you um, right side here looks like this one is a, an ES trade on the short side again opening range uh, average there in, in blue uh, premium beautiful premium setup Pre again a premium is a short sale in weakening conditions. So we want to execute a premium uh, in weakening conditions, and this one worked out pretty well. Now you can see, maybe it's hard to see that that first arrow, that green arrow. What it did there is this was a, just a two-contract position. I think the max risk on this was $200 per trade. Uh, it it exited uh, one contract automatically at this risk-free level. All right, so uh, I think it was uh, plus eight ticks on that one. It took one off. And then once you're at the risk-free level here, 
okay then then it's at your effective discretion to to manage the trade to try to you know pull as much off as you as you possibly can and and again the way we manage this here live in our room you know looked out to be pretty good we we ended up getting about uh, a three hour value a little little around the three hour value for the whole um for the whole uh, uh trade here okay very nice trade again this is kind of would be like a triple a a plus uh, type uh, trade for us. so you know that's the type of trade uh, we're looking to uh, for now again the auto trade assistant will do this for us but it is up to us individually to know under what conditions and again this is all the stuff that I teach all the details of when we would turn it on when we would turn it off you know uh, and again you don't leave it on as a black box but you use it to help you assist now think about your own particular trading would you have been able to get that crude oil trade? Maybe, maybe not been able to get that uh, ES trade uh, with the momentum that that's picking up at the time. Uh, you would have perhaps hesitated. All right, and again, uh, you know, hesitation in this market, you know, will cost you quite a bit. All right. So now, um, I'm somebody that uh, you know, as a global trade titan, uh, you know, I pride myself on on the transparency and truthfulness, not only the profitability that's kind of you know uh an outcome but rather the truthfulness and 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 uh, transparency of what we do and in doing so um i'm probably one of the very few again uh <clears throat> i think there's only 10 trade titans out there that dr dean hanley has right now but actually will show losses losses do occur all right and um i am not afraid to show losses uh, it's part of the trading process and as many times, you know, we will learn quite a bit out of the loss, you know, taking a loss rather than just uh, booking all winners. So uh, you will see plenty of losses. Uh, but we, what we do um, very strictly is we keep our losses small and under control. It's very rare that I will take a monster loss. All right. And again, a monster loss is, is uh, relative. But, um, you know, if you're looking for somebody that has you know truthfulness and transparency and not afraid to talk about losses to show losses you've come to the right spot now again uh, overall our performance is is pretty uh, um, speaks for itself all right from historically but again we don't rest on our um, you know trades from years past uh, we focus and we work hard on on our trades on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis all right, in our excuse me, our last graphic here for for our trade. Now this is actual uh, graphic of our trading screens that we show uh, intraday. All right, so again, uh, you will see uh, we have a little trade window up here uh, that shows we have we have an algo that we um, um, that we employ as well, and again a little trade window that keeps uh, track of a lot of the stuff that we do throughout the day. Um, but here you'll see just the combination of the uh, a discount uh, long here in S&P. And for those of you that um, use order flow, and we use order flow quite a bit uh, in our uh, analysis and decision process, uh, you'll see this, again, this is just a side-by-side -side screen of, uh, of what it looks at, what it looks for, okay? So... Uh, these are just some examples of the discount and premiums. This is our core setup that we use. And um, uh, CCI crossover system using uh, the capabilities of the uh, of our algorithm, the auto trade assistant. Okay, and uh, this is uh, what it will look like for you. Okay, again, live. Uh, there, there's nothing hidden. All right, and then the last two slides. Now, again, uh, you know, the industry requires me to make sure that you understand that, you know, hypothetical results are just that. Uh, when you look at performance data, and of course, that past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. But that said, all right, this is our history since the second quarter of 2015. Uh, now, this particular report shows. Uh, what we call this is what we call our tick count now let me just quickly explain to you what the details of this is is that the numbers that you see here represent what we call a 1r value so for instance on an individual trade 
all right this represents one contract only data so if, if, for instance if you're trading crude oil and uh, one contract and you make 10 ticks okay on one contract now that's what's going to be recorded if it's a winner if it's a loser it's going to go in the losing column uh, but let's just say on that particular trade setup say a discount um, you bought uh, you know I, I you know live in our trading room we bought two contracts and it went for you know uh, 20 ticks okay we're only going to um, record as if it's only one contract all right and it went to the risk-free level of 10 ticks we're only going to be recording that anything beyond a one contract risk-free or a one hour value uh, trade uh, I don't I do not track in this particular uh, performance sheet and the reason for that is what this sheet represents and this is live public on our website um, what the sheet represents everybody is what the trade setup or what we call opportunity did it does not represent my personal trades or any of our traders personal trades collectively but what it shows what the setup actually did uh, only to a one hour value now some people you know comment that you know I'm not I'm doing myself a disservice but what I'm at the same time what I'm trying to do here is provide a baseline of what the performance of our the premium and discount or CCI crossover system has done for us in the past what it is currently doing this is updated to last Friday uh, January and February have not been uh, stellar months uh, but they have been very much positive uh, for our members and this is just the the rolling tick count so we can see last year in 2015 uh, and then in, into the first quarter of 2016 we had a lot of high tick count readings uh, as we enter as we entered finished the fourth quarter of, of last year and into the first quarter so far this year uh, the volatility as you we all know of that has been uh, down dramatically all right and um, and you know uh, we're having a tough time of you know pulling any real profitability uh, out of the marketplace but again past performance is not indicative of what we can do but this has shown you what what the power of our uh, premium discounts uh, has shown then what we do is we have a cumulative P&L here again uh, this line uh, here is based upon a one contract and then we normalize it and that's what Dr. Dean Hanley does all right he normalizes all these trades as if they were three contracts all right so some of our members you know will do certainly better than than what's shown on here but again this represents what it has done and you know obviously not what it's what's going to do in the future but um, but it gives you a good benchmark and then in terms of the uh, transparency all right that Dr. Dean uh, Hanley requires and this is something that you know we've always done now on the same spreadsheet and again this is publicly available uh, you will see individual trades the time the the type trade a discount or a premium the entry the stop and the again the initial one hour value exit so uh, take a look at this one over here that shows on 2-9 uh, February 9th 2017 um, you'll see that uh, 22.94.50 stop was at uh, 92.50 and the exit here that was recorded for the performance was 96.50 so that's plus eight ticks so that's basically a hundred dollars a contract very simple but you'll notice here in the in the columns that's marked target one target two and target three that that particular trade went on beyond the risk-free level and went for 16 24 and 32 ticks uh, respectively now those 16 24 and 32 is not recorded as part of the performance that would be this is what the setup ultimately did and how an individual trader be it myself or anybody else would have traded it uh, certainly not necessarily to to all 32 ticks all right or for the number of contracts but it does represent the ability uh, of what the um, setup actually does or can do for you all right and and again on the right hand side is an example of the crude oil all right so we are very very transparent um, this is something that is a core criteria of becoming a global trade titan and uh, it is one in which uh, as a trader 
uh, that I've always done and we've always started when we began our uh, Polaris trading group so that's the the, the core end of the uh, presentation guys we're coming to the end uh, if there's any questions out there let me know uh, I would love to offer you guys come on in take a take a free trial I offer 14 days all right which is which is basically a lot longer than um, you know anybody else perhaps out there come on in and visit what we do there's a lot of information that we um, presented to you guys today and um, there's a lot to absorb and again as I said at the outset each of these strategies and techniques in the auto trade uh, we have uh, individual workshops that we've done with our members we have well over uh, 50 videos uh, in our educational media for our private members and so you know it's worthwhile to come take a look uh, kick the tires you know see what we do and uh, uh, you know check us out and and see you know uh, if uh, the style uh, we're not scalpers uh, we do look for uh, larger trades other than a few ticks here and there. But again, we will adjust uh, accordingly to, um, to what the market conditions are offering us. All right. Okay, if there's any questions, uh, I don't know if you can type in questions or not. Feel free to uh, type in questions. I don't see them. But if not, uh, you can you know, come and visit and we will be happy to... Um, uh, we we're happy to answer any of your questions that that you may have, uh, you know, as as a guest to us. All right. There's my contact information, my address. Come visit us, PolarisTradingGroup.com. Uh, the Twitter page uh, is a great resource. You can see if you visited the Twitter page. All right. We have um, a number of different. We get like almost 3,000 uh, snapshots in there of actual trade setups and so forth that we've done throughout the course of the day and I post them uh, after the fact all right so um, ninja 8 we will be uh, working on uh, ninja 8 we're currently still on ninja 7 but we're in the works on doing 8 uh, do you take trades live yes we do GV all right we do have live do I always use a five-point stop on NASDAQ? Uh, on the NQ, that's our uh, initial stop loss. Depending upon the volatility, okay, we will um, adjust it accordingly. But for the most part, uh, five points, when the volatility starts increasing, uh, we may move it out to, say, seven. But that's per contract, so it's $100 per contract. So that's really not that, that bad. And um, five-point stop seems to work pretty well, okay? How many trades on an average day? Uh, boy, that depends on volatility. Um, I think historically we're probably um, anywhere, um, probably anywhere from like five to eight trades a day uh, between S&P and uh, crude oil. Now we've added recently uh, the NQ, so um, you know the bottom line is, is we, we could have uh, easily upwards to you know uh, perhaps maybe. 15 trades or so depending what's our risk reward we do look for a minimum of uh, anywhere from two to three to one but when it comes to you know uh, risk to reward ratios uh, those are historical in nature when you put on a trade you're basically at a, at a one to one risk all right in other words you know you're trying to get to that risk free point pay for the trade all right after your initial risk and and then work the trade after that if it turns out that at the end of the trade, you know, you, you know, you, your your backwards looking uh, risk is uh, three three and a half to one, that's terrific. I think on average, our um, average risk to reward ratio is is around three to one. Okay. All right. Well, that's. I think I've hit my time limit here um, at the uh, one hour mark or just underneath. I don't know if we have much time left. There's any other questions? And like I said, come on in, take a free trial. You have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Come on in and take a look. And uh, I'll let Kevin uh, handle it from here. All right. All right. Thanks very much for your attention, everybody. And enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate it.